Welcome to the space where we break down barriers and perceptions about a career in law by talking to the talented people of Gowling WLG. I'm Emma Dennis, Diversity, Inclusion and Wellbeing Senior Manager at Gowling WLG. So join me as we get to dive under the surface and understand the diverse experiences and perspectives of our people, how they've got to where they are and what they wish they'd known. Today we're here with Liz Gain, partner and team leader of the firm's pensions team, to hear more about her role, how she got to where she is and what a leadership role in a law firm is really like. So, hello Liz. Hi. <laughs> right. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I mentioned just that you head up the pensions team at the firm and wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about your role and what you do. Yeah, sure. So, um, the team consists of sort of 45 lawyers and uh, around about 10 support staff and um, so it's quite a big team to to sort of be looking after um, and and really I, I do a whole variety of, of things so I'm, I'm looking after clients on the one hand so yeah. doing my normal day-to-day -day job I suppose um, but then the rest of the time is taken up with looking after the team whether that be some you know a, a pastoral role yeah. or sometimes it's working out where people are going to sit it's about recruitment it's about um, working the finances of the team so it encompasses an awful lot yeah. um, so it, it's it's certainly very varied and very interesting but it can be quite busy as well and is it a couple of years you've been team leader now yeah so Facility. just into just into my second year of, of doing the, the role okay. and how how has that changed your role what what is being a team I suppose it's what you've just said a lot of what you've just said but how is how has that changed from when you were a partner in the team to now leading that team yeah so um it, it is it is much more about l looking looking after people looking after the finances of the team I, I would say the biggest part of the role is is looking after people yeah. um because it, it's the people in the team that that keep us going there they're the most important part of the team so I have to make sure that you know everybody is um, as happy as they can be at work and um, you know able um, and to, to, to do their to do their job and, and fulfill their role for clients um, I, I have to say I'm not doing it all on my own you know I am yeah. sort of ably assisted by my other partners in in the team but um, you know the, the the bulk of it is 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 me leading and sort of working out um, you know what what's needed um, setting the strategy for the team setting the recruitment strategy the recruitment policy um, setting the finances for the team and the targets that we're we're aiming for each year so it, I mean in terms of what's changed um, yeah. it's doing all it's of all that um, and the thing that always surprised me was that um, I was capable of doing it because as a lawyer you're not really trained to do all of that stuff yeah. but um, you know it, it it has been it has been quite a steep learning curve for yeah. me but it's part of the job that I really enjoy and for anybody at the firm who's looking at what their future looks like would you recommend the role of a team leader 100 percent yeah um, it is part of the role that I really really enjoy um, I think having a hand in um, the management of the team and, and the strategy of the team and how that feeds into the wider firm is, is really interesting and really rewarding. And for, you mentioned earlier that sort of you're trained to be a lawyer and not necessarily trained with all those other <laughs> aspects that come with, with the team leader role. What sort of support did you get from the firm to make sure that you could do all of those extra bits as well? So I, I would say that the the bulk of the support I've had has been hands-on support from yeah. the other partners in my team. Now I'm, I'm really lucky to come from a, a team of partners who have been partners for a, a long time. Um, and so actually they have been able to impart their, their wisdom as it yeah. were. Um, but what I've found is that it, so, some, of it, some of it comes naturally or you'll have a natural instinct as to which way to go if, if, if you're you know if you've got a, a difficult decision to make so you might have a natural instinct as to how you will deal with a particular situation what's been really helpful is just been having that backup support from the other partners to say this is what I'm thinking yeah um you know how do you think this this will land or you know do you think this is the right way to approach it 
and it's really helpful just to have that that sort of hands-on support from my my fellow partners that's brilliant um and then I guess if we if we go back a little way did you always know you wanted to be a lawyer I think I, I think I probably did from being quite a young age. So I'm going to show my age now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when I was when I was younger, I used to love a program called LA Law. Yes, <laughs> I don't know if you remember I it. Do. Um, but it was LA Law that kind of really made me think. Yeah, that's what I want to do for a living. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, actually pensions is nothing like LA law at all. <laughs> um, but it did kind of, um, it, it, it was that that really made me want to go on and do a law degree. And, and then when I got to the end of my law degree, I thought, I really enjoy this. And, and that's what spurred me on to sort of take the route of, of qualifying as a, as a solicitor. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's not quite how they portrayed it in LA law. <laughs> Do you know what? It's amazing the amount of people that say it's something that they've watched on television that's then inspired them to get into this. Yes. And when you did when you did your training contract and you trained, what what was it that drew you to pensions? Um, so w- when I when I did my training contract, the the six months was a, a, a sort of split between employment and and pensions. And what drew me to that initially was, I, th- I think, the real human element of. Um, both employment law and pensions yeah. law. Um, it was good in that it gave me an opportunity to do pensions law, which you, you don't study at university and you don't study it at law school, so you don't really know anything about it. Um, but actually, as I got into the training seat, really for me, it was it was the intellectual challenge of it. I enjoy that. I enjoy... Um, having to turn quite complex ideas into something that's more straightforward for uh, an audience. Um, I I really like the human aspect of it, so I really like the fact that pensions is about providing a benefit for people that they've saved into all of their lives, so Mm. kind of like the fact that I am helping trustees to provide that benefit that that people have paid for um, and that will help them into their retirement. Um, and I, I like the fact that I'm dealing with, with trustees who come from a whole range of, of different backgrounds. Yeah. Um, so, so, so dealing with a, a whole variety of people and having to put across quite complex ideas sometimes um, to a very broad audience is, um, is really enjoyable to me. So when you started your career, you sort of qualified into pensions and then you sort of worked your way up through to partnership then was partnership always the goal for you um can I be honest with you yeah no it 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 wasn't and when I when I started out what I wanted to do was to do a really good job and um you know build build up my experience and build up my rapport with clients and that that was really what I wanted to do I wanted to do a good job yeah um at at that stage early on in my career partnership was not something that was necessarily on the horizon for me kind of I go into things thinking let me see if I can do this and let me see if I can do it well and then I'll decide whether I'm capable of going on to the onto the next stage um and that's kind of how how it has been for me over over the last I'm going to say 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> when did it come to a point where partnership was was then the goal? So, so what's what's really interesting is that I had had my family and yeah. sort of once I'd had my children, um, I was at that stage going for a director role. Yeah. Um, and again, similarly, I was I'm going to do this role and I'm going to see if I can do this well, and then I'll decide. Yeah. Uh, you know, sort of whether partnership is is the next step for me or not um and actually once I'd had my second child I knew I didn't want any more children and actually at that point um as they were just getting a little bit older and getting through primary school that was the point at which I thought actually now definitely I've got the time I've got the energy yeah. and it is something that I want to do so it was kind of an iterative process for me um yeah. but yeah it was it was once the children were a little bit older a little bit more self-sufficient um that that, that spurred me on 
We'll take a short break now and when we're back we'll find out more about Lizzie's career and what advice she'd give to those at the start of theirs. Welcome back to part two. We're going to kick off with some quick fire questions to get to know you a little bit more. What was your first job? Um, my first job was working in a Martin McCall's um, news agent. Oh, lovely. <laughs> and where did you grow up? Uh, so I grew up in um, a little village in Lancashire, so right out in the sticks, um, very much farming land. Oh, lovely. <laughs> was it nice? Did you enjoy that? Yeah, it was, it was lovely. It was... Um, very very nice very quiet very very different from Birmingham yeah <laughs> very different what time do you usually wake up in the mornings uh 6 a.m early bird then. early bird yeah. yeah I need I need the time to get uh, to get myself and the kids up and out out the door yeah oh this question this is the the big question is your bed made right now yes <laughs> I make it every morning. I'm very good. This is a running joke of the series of this question that everybody's bed is made. Mine is not. Well, I tell a lie. Actually, today my bed is made, and that's purely because I feel like I've been shamed into making it. (laughs) Because everyone else makes their bed. I always think it's made when it's much nicer to get into at night. True. True. (laughs) What's your favourite breakfast? Um. I always make myself like little egg muffin things, so that's Ooh. what I have every every morning. I'm a big batch cooker, and I sort of yeah. cook everything on a Sunday night for the week. Wow, <laughs> that's organised. <laughs> uh, what's your favourite movie? Mm. Oh, it's a hard it's one, a isn't it? One. Oh, I'm very very much um, old school movie. It's got to be Dirty Dancing. It, you know, it's a classic. It's a classic. Um, your dream holiday destination? Oh, difficult one. Yeah. Difficult one. So, as you know, just come back from Australia, yes. which was absolutely amazing. Um, I'd love to go somewhere really kind of tropical and luxury. I'd love to go to like the Maldives yeah. or somewhere like that. Yeah, there's lots of places. Lots of places yeah. I want to go. Um, I think some of those destinations are probably for when the kids are grown up and gone. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> What's your go-to karaoke song? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, w- I don't sing it very well, Yeah. but Gold by Spandau Ballet. Oh, mm. good choice. A <laughs> few more questions for you. So these are some either or questions. Cats or dogs? Cats. Would you rather fly or have super strength? fly are you more of an introvert or an extrovert Mm, introvert night out or a night in night in would you rather travel to the past or to the future Mm. past and learn by watching or learn by doing learn by doing I wanted to talk to you about um, pause and play Mm because I know you've utilised the firm's pause and play policy yeah um, and that supports non what we like to call non-traditional career trajectories so you can pause your career at a certain point Mm -hmm. for whatever reason that might be which means you just carry on as you are performing as you are and then when you're ready press play to then try and accelerate and move towards the next level I just wanted to ask about what your experience of using pause and play was like yeah so so for me it's been a really positive experience so um just to explain I'd sort of um had had my children my children now were sort of 16 and and 12 but but when I had my daughter 16 years ago um at that point when I came back to work I did not feel as though I had either the time or the energy to to put into everything that I would need to put into to sort of progress through the ranks at at the same speed as I had been progressing through prior prior to that Um, and to be honest with you I wanted to spend some time with her and focus on her Um, I had my son three years later and and similarly you know I needed some time to spend with the children and 
um, just wait until they were a little bit older. Yeah. And it was at the point when they were a little bit older, um, sort of getting through primary school, my daughter was sort of heading off to, to secondary school, yeah. um, when, you know, at that point, I kind of felt like I had, I did have the time and most importantly, the energy yeah. to, to put into them progressing my, my career through. Um, the partners in my team were really, really good at um, helping me with that mm. and were very, very receptive to me saying, look, not not now, now's not the right time. But as soon as I said, now is the right time, let's play, they were very, very good at then picking up and helping me then progress through the ranks. So, so for me, pause for play has been a massively positive experience and it's allowed me to shape my career in the way that I wanted to do it around my children and raising my children and you know devoting the time that I needed to devote to them um, but then you know being able to progress my career yeah. through at the right time for me. What would you say to anybody currently that wants to use pause and play and is, is a bit nervous about potentially being forgotten mm. about when they're in that pause yeah so I think certainly for, for me it's been a very very positive experience the the key I think was communication with the partners it was everybody being open with each other yeah. um, about you know the the situation what it what it would mean the pause and, and then the play and what what the play means what the pause means yeah. um, so communication is key um, but all I can say is that it's been a hugely positive experience for me so I would very much encourage people to um, take advantage of pause and play if it is the right thing for them for, for what you know for whatever reason Perfect. Um, and we were talking earlier about sort of your route to partnership and your experience of partnership what would you say to anybody that is early earlier on in their careers or sort of midway in their careers who's looking up at partnership as an option and thinking actually I don't think that's for me mm -hmm. so I think I think number one you, you do need to be quite sure if, yeah. if you're going to go for it because um, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy um, so I, I do think you need to be sure and if you're going to do it you need to commit to it a hundred percent um, so that would be that would be number one. I think number two would be really find out about what it involves. Mm. And you know, I think it's very easy to look at other people in in situations and think, oh, there's no way I don't ever want to do that. Um, but but you don't you don't necessarily see the whole picture. So um, people might see partners running around and very busy and what have you, but they they don't necessarily see the flip side of that which is the, the positives of, of being a partner yeah. um, so I would take time to talk to people and really find out about what the role involves before necessarily um, making a, a, a knee-jerk decision about whether it's for you or, or not yeah. um, so I suppose those would be my two key pieces of advice. Do you think from your experience there are any misconceptions you had about partnership before you got there that have sort of been debunked now that you are a partner? Um, I think, um, I, th I think what's really interesting, I mean, I think one of the things <laughs> that could, could put you off is sort of looking at, looking at partners and thinking it's a, oh, it's, it's terribly busy and it's terribly stressful and you know, I, I, I don't want that. I don't, I wouldn't say it's not busy and not stressful. Yeah. Um, but what I would say is, there's a lot of support there, there's a lot of support from your fellow partners. The one thing that w really surprised me and perhaps shouldn't have surprised me when I came into the partnership was just how brilliant all the other partners were. And that wasn't just the partners in my team, that was partners around the firm who were one, really, really happy for me, genuinely really happy for me, and two, genuinely massively supportive. And I know even now, if I had something that I wasn't sure about or if I wanted to talk to somebody outside of the team mm -hmm. I could happily pick up the phone or drop an email to any any one of the other partners in the firm they would they would say yeah come on let's go and meet up have a coffee let's chat chat it through 
Um, so the, the, that was probably the thing that surprised me the most, just the level of support that's out there. It's, I think it, that has been really, really positive. That's amazing because it is. It's all about the people that are around you, isn't it? Indeed, I mean, we're at yeah. work so much that yeah. it makes such a difference to have good people yeah. that you can rely on for that support. Or absolutely, absolutely. And to be honest with you, it's it's the people and the support from the partners in the pensions team that's always kept me here. You know, I've trained at this firm. I've been here for twenty five years. Yeah. It's that that's kept me here. It is the people. Um, so yeah 100 percent. and uh, you know what what's really nice is that that goes across the firm what advice would you give to anybody that's at the start of their careers that's just sort of maybe they've had a realization that they want to be a lawyer and they're just sort of starting on that journey <laughs> <laughs> um i mean i think it, it's it's helpful isn't it to sort of think about you know where is it that you want to get to I think you need to right from the start take control of your own career and take control of um, where, where it goes so no one's going to spoon feed you the stuff you have to yourself decide what is it that you want how are you going to get there and and seek out the help from people who are going to help you get there and achieve your goals um, so yeah that, that would be um, so over this the space of your career so far, have you had mentors over that time that have that have helped you? Um, yes, I have. So I've had um, mentors from within the team, so yeah. other partners within the team, um, as I was kind of going through, and that actually was part of the pause and play. So at the point when we hit play, yeah. one of the partners. Uh, volunteered to kind of help me in terms of putting together my business case and helping me with the, the I suppose the areas that I needed to work on to make that business case as as strong as as possible. Yeah. So, um, so that was from within the team. But then also I've had external help from a partner from the real estate team, one of the real estate teams, who um, helped me sort of as I was going through the process. Um, since then it's been so since I've, I've become a partner and since I've become a team leader it's been mu much more informal but actually mm. I've had other team leaders from across the firm reach out to me and you know put coffees in the diary and yeah. that's been a, a really good opportunity to chat things through or chat things through that you know sometimes you just you just want to bounce around with somebody else um, so yeah more informal mentoring at, at sort of at the moment but um yeah certainly a, a lot of a lot of help and support that I've had across the uh, across the firm that's good and I think mentors are really important yes and I know from conversations we've had with with a few other people it's not just thinking you you need one mentor that's going to do it all for you but thinking that like you say different people yeah. that you can talk to about different things yeah and I know the pensions team have had a, a diversity working group mm -hmm. for for a number of years now mm -hmm just interested in how that came about and why that was so important to the team um so i think it was it was driven initially by um one of my now partners ben goldby who has um a, a very keen interest in in diversity and, and inclusion um issues um as a team we wanted to find a way of supporting the wider firm initiative um, and across the team I think we were all cognizant of the fact that we weren't as diverse across the team as we perhaps could be yeah. um, and so you know we've done a lot of work across the team to make the team more diverse and more inclusive um, and that obviously over time has made it a more attractive team for people to want to come and work in um, and so the diversity and inclusion network that we've got within the team is just aimed at continuing that journey. That's brilliant and it's been really good to see, I know since I've joined the firm, the sort of things that you've been doing as a team and that you've had a focus on this for a number of years yeah. and actually you're almost the blueprint for what we've been trying to do with our inclusion for all strategy yes, which is yeah. to take this out to other teams so that every team is looking at what they can do within their sphere of influence to help us move forwards yeah 
And then you mentioned earlier your children, yes. so nearly both teenagers. Nearly, nearly both teenagers, yes. How do you manage what is a demanding what is a demanding career and then I know what it's like to have children of pretty much the same <laughs> the same age how yeah. do you manage all of that uh one by being very organized hence the batch cooking yeah. um but um yeah I, I mean I've I've got I've got some help as well so um I mean, the other thing that I didn't say is that I'm on my own with the children, so okay. I'm a solo parent <laughs> to the oh, two wow. children. So, um, so that brings its own challenges. But actually, I always, <laughs> I always refer to my army of women that I have around me. So I have a child minder that yeah. that helps me sort of with the children. So if, if for example, I'm having to work late or I'm in London or something yeah. like that, she helps me picks up the children from school makes some tea drops them off to the after school club yeah. so um she's she's an absolute angel yeah. um and and then you know i have uh, other women that help me with, with my cleaning and all of that yeah. kind of stuff but um yeah so so i i do have help yeah. um i think being organized i think the children being older also helps yeah, um so you know uh, i think in some respects that that's why pause and play does work so well because yeah. it does allow you to um perhaps have a little bit more flexibility later on yeah um, and it does it takes a village doesn't it to get everything mm -hmm. done i think we sometimes put too much pressure on ourselves of trying to think we can do everything and actually yeah. nobody can do everything without no. something needing you need help from wherever that yes. might be yeah. to, to manage it all and, and there's no no nobody expects you to be superwoman i don't think no. you can be superwoman so um yeah taking taking the help i think is a necessity really it is definitely yeah oh well a huge thank you liz for thank today you. i've really enjoyed talking to you and thank you for sharing your story and some of your insights um we'll be back next week to get to know more talented people at gowling wlg Thank you for listening, have a wonderful week and remember we all have the power to make a difference.